trouble with him, especially in his later years, uh, was that he became very pontifical about the faith, as though he was the sole repository of its truth. You know, God may not exist, you know, and uh, you, you're supposed to accept that as though it's from the Vatican itself. Uh, hell probably does not exist. I mean, how, how does he know? Uh, and uh, his own attitude to Catholicism never really squared up with the official attitude. Very, very, very far indeed from the, from the Vatican's view of Catholicism, but he got away with it because he was a distinguished writer. I think he became uh, uh, much more irate, uh, much more angry in old age, living very sparsely, very parsimoniously, drinking, always drinking, but uh, stripped himself down to a, a, a total lack of opulence. You know, this was not the situation of the distinguished writer at all, but there he was. Uh, happy, he said he was happy, reading, going to mass occasionally, but living in sin. He was able to reconcile these things, which I personally couldn't do. He believed that there was a connection between communism and Catholicism, uh, that uh, both uh, were concerned with building the just society. And uh, I think in The Comedian, one of his characters says, you know, uh, both Catholicism and communism have blood on their hands, but they do not have water like pilots. See, one of these epigrammatic statements, which uh, are supposed to be fairly profound, but don't really yield very much. He, he, he was on very dangerous ground, I think, politically. But I think he wanted to create an image. You know, the idea of the, the, the great man jetting around the world, going to the most dangerous spots in the world and uh, holding to uh, a kind of fundamental truth in the face of political lies.